Greetings, Facebook and uh, YouTube followers. This is John Demokos, a.k.a. Half Man, Half Cichlid. Did you ever notice on uh, Facebook that a lot of people ask questions about buying used aquariums and that the uh, comments, and there's usually a lot of them, are all over the place from buy it to don't buy it to fill it with water and observe it overnight to it looks like it's going to crack or you can fix the center brace and so on and so forth. Have you ever worried about your current aquarium and its seals? Uh, I'm talking about the silicone seals and whether they are healthy, robust to prevent your aquarium from, uh, from splitting or if you have a chip in your aquarium, whether it's going to result in the glass breaking. Have you ever wondered why there's really no concrete guidance on this subject? I've checked a number of, of uh, YouTube videos and, and uh, did not find any useful information, useful guidance on uh, how to make a determination if an aquarium should be bought or your existing aquarium should be retired due to the potential for a leak. So follow me on four simple rules that uh, I'll lay out for you when to buy or not to buy a used aquarium. And these rules can also be applied to aquariums that you have in your, in your home that uh, maybe demonstrate some of the problems that I'll, I'll be talking about that we quite often see when uh, looking for used aquariums. And uh, you can also use these rules to buy new aquariums. The problems I'm going to highlight, which can result in cracks and splits and leakage, uh, these problems I've seen with uh, brand new aquariums in uh, at Petco, at PetSmart, and uh, as we all know, uh, new aquariums not, are not immune from uh, breaking and cracking, as we've seen from uh, many followers on YouTube and Facebook. So anyway, we, uh, I don't think I have to remind everybody that uh, a cracked aquarium or a split at the seams on an aquarium is, is probably the number one aquarium disaster. Not only do we most likely lose our uh, valuable uh, fish tank specimens, but uh, there's also the damage uh, uh, to property and uh, the risk of getting, if you rent a place, the risk of getting kicked out if, uh, if we uh, flood the place and the people downstairs. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and uh, we'll look forward to your comments. First, a little education on uh, how aquariums are built. Generally, the glass panes are pressed together at a right angle with uh, silicone between the two pieces of glass. That's called a uh, butt joint. That's indicated by uh, the red silicone in this illustration. This is the most important part of the joint. But there's also silicone that uh, is uh, placed at a through the right angle on the uh, inside of the uh, butt joint for additional strength. The colors in the silicone here are just for uh, illustration purposes. Here's an illustration that shows uh, the silicone within the uh, butt seal with the uh, butt joint, which gives the primary strength to the union between the two pieces of glass. Then uh, there's the uh, sort of the, the 
silicone that's put at a right angle and around the butt joint that uh, provides uh, additional and st- but secondary strength to uh, to the joint to the joining of the two pieces of glass. This is a 30-year-old aquarium that I just uh, resealed. I didn't touch the silicone between the panes of glass and the butt seal, but I did uh, redo the the secondary silicone outside the butt joint. Here's another aquarium with a rather thin piece of glass. You can see the butt joint uh, between the two pieces of glass is in pretty good shape. However, there is some significant deterioration in the secondary silicone. Here's an aquarium where the uh, silicone in the butt joint looks great, has thicker glass, but you can see that the silicone, the secondary silicone adhering to the glass is starting to uh, peel. Now we're gonna switch gears a little bit and look at the quality of the uh, butt joint silicone. And you can see in this uh, shot there's some uh, uh, minor deterioration uh, in the butt joint silicone. Uh, I wouldn't worry about this too much, but it could be the beginning of a problem. Here's an example where uh, the butt joint silicone is uh, starting to separate and you can see it won't be long before uh, this tank has a significant problem. The last example and this example too are uh, two that two aquariums that I definitely would uh, take a pass on and not uh, uh, purchase because there is uh, significant deterioration of the silicone in the butt seal. Okay, rule number one, look for a near-perfect seal on the uh, butt joint, inspect all four corners, bottom to top, and uh, reject any aquarium that has any significant deterioration of that silicone within the butt seal. The uh, secondary silicone that's outside the butt seal that's something if you're willing to, you know, you can, uh, uh, and that's a topic of another video, that's something that uh, can be uh, 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 replaced effectively if you're uh, relatively handy and uh, you follow some uh, important steps. The next thing to inspect for are uh, chips, cracks, and uh, the like. I'll show you some quick pictures here. But you can see here uh, there's some uh, impact uh, breakage to the glass, which uh, is not good. Here's another example of a gouge of the gla- in the glass and also uh, some de- deterioration of the uh, silicone in the uh, butt seal. Not a good situation. Very important, check those uh, corners, the four bottom corners and the uh, top corners. They're especially prone to breakage from moving the aquarium and uh, people hitting the corners with something in their homes. Here's an uh, an example of impact damage to a top corner of the aquarium. Uh, What's underneath is, is sheltered to a large degree by the black molding on this aquarium, but I, I certainly would be worried about what's going on underneath and its effect on uh, the future reliability of this aquarium to hold water long term. And why are chips and nicks so important to not have in an aquarium? As you can see here, it, they cause a, a weakening of the structure of the aquarium, and uh, quite frequently, uh, the, they're the location. Those, those chips or nicks, where a crack will begin, that'll eventually uh, destroy your aquarium. So, rule number two: reject 
any aquarium for chips, nicks, and gouges. Inspect the uh, four corners, the bottom, and, and the uh, top of the aquarium. Any nick or uh, chip is a likely place for uh, either direct leakage or breakage of the uh, glass. Now we're going to talk about the top bracing, which is extremely important, especially in taller aquariums and bow front aquariums. As you can see in this particular example, it looks like a bow front. Uh, you can see the plastic is starting to show signs of uh, stress cra cracks as uh, deterioration of the plastic. Here you can see what time uh, and additional stress on the plastic joint it starts to separate and this will cause the front panel of the aquarium to bow out and potentially likely uh, crack. Another example where uh, the brace has, uh, plastic brace has actually separated and uh, creating a big potential for uh, problems. Another quick example of a situation which uh, 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 represents a risk that uh, I would not consider in buying a used aquarium. Another quick example of uh, the top brace uh, separating an aquarium uh, that uh, I would recommend you not consider buying. Here's one that has a top brace that is actually separated in the middle and uh, uh, again uh, would not buy this aquarium. Create a lot of problems. Last picture, a glass brace is actually better but uh, make, even if it's glass you should inspect it and make sure that the, the uh, glass is well secured to the front and back of the aquarium and that there are no cracks in the uh, glass itself. So rule number three, reject any broken, cracked, or stressed cross bracing. Now some people have ideas on how you can uh, replace the cross bracing, but in my opinion there are enough used aquariums out there uh, that one can buy at a much reduced price that you don't have to take the risk of uh, the aquarium pa front panel uh, popping out and uh, flooding your home. Some of the aquarium, premium aquarium manufacturers uh, add what's called Euro bracing to the top of the aquarium. You can see the, uh, the glass uh, cross bracing in this particular example uh, which uh, really makes the uh, tank a lot stronger and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, plastic cracking or breaking as in previous examples. Another excellent example of uh, Euro bracing if you're lucky to uh, find a used aquarium that has this type of uh, reinforcement. And a uh, couple more examples. Here someone apparently is adding the uh, Euro bracing <coughs> to a uh, rimless aquarium. Doing a real nice job. So rule number four, do buy aquariums with uh, glass Euro bracing. I mean, do the other inspections for the other things that I mentioned, like chips and uh, the integrity of the uh, silicone corners. But uh, uh, generally, Euro bracing aquariums are uh, premium aquariums. and uh, you have a lot less to worry about uh, uh, with this type of uh, construction. Last but not least, do inspect the inside silicone 
all the way around the aquarium, the sides, and in particular the bottom, and uh, even the top. Expect, inspect for uh, adhesion, making sure it's not peeling off, and that uh, it looks like it's uh, sound and in uh, decent shape. Here's another example. It looks like someone uh, uh, redid this aquarium, at least the uh, bottom silicone, which is fine, but make sure that uh, it is adhering very well to the uh, glass on both uh, any of the panels that uh, are contacted. So the last rule, do inspect the inside silicone for... Uh, separation for gaps and for uh, peeling of the silicone. You know, I hope this uh, video uh, will help you the next time you're uh, tempted to look at and uh, buy an aquarium. And uh, yeah, an easy way to avoid a, a uh, trip for nothing is to ask for some close-up pictures of these various parts of the aquarium uh, from the person that you're buying from and also ask them the questions if any of these uh, uh, problems exist. So look forward to your comments, your uh, inputs, and your experiences. Thank you.